Hi, my name's Bill Brayton and welcome to another Virtual Training Solutions video presented by ATRA. In this video, we're going to be disassembling and assembling the compounder unit from a 62TE. Got a couple of clutch drums here and a shaft and a bearing, a tapered bearing and uh, a gear here. So we're going to show you all the steps that it's needed to uh, rebuild this and uh, make it uh, durable for the life of the transmission. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, okay, we'll set it here in the bench. There's a snap ring down in here that can be problematic. Uh, it's definitely necessary, but uh, I've practiced this a couple of times. Just like that. That's how that's supposed to work. So you could do it with just a pair of small snap ring pliers and the tabs face down. Let's put this back together again. The tabs face this way. Very critical. You put it in this way, it might not load up into the case correctly when you're doing your final assembly. So. We're going to pull the sun gear off and some splines, okay? Now, normally there would be a bearing underneath this, underneath this sun gear, which rides right here. You could see that up here over my shoulder. That's what the bearing looks like, okay? And don't worry about it because in the later model units, uh, Chrysler says that it's no longer needed. So you really don't need to put it there in the first place. It'll actually help the lube because this, this is centered in the planet down below it in the uh, compounder unit. And it's held in place by uh, a, tapered bearing, a tapered bearing assembly here. And it's all fit in the case. So there's no, uh, it's not gonna wobble in the planet or it's so, it's really, it's not, it's not necessary. Okay, so next we're going to remove the direct drum and set it aside. And let's, let's, do, let's just do the direct drum right now. We'll get to the low drum and the sprag here in, uh, in just a minute. So, this is a pretty straightforward setup. Going to, yeah, get the snap ring out of here. So just a real flat snap ring, the flange. Here we have a bearing on the hub. Notice that the flat side and the tabs face up. And we have the hub that splines to the shaft here. We have another larger bearing that the flat side faces up. You could see how that fits nicely on the hub there. So we got a couple of bearings. And then we'll take the clutches out. We have 12 one-sided clutches. Now, these clutches look new because they are new. We don't have the used clutches in there because they were all trashed out. We want to keep this video as clean as possible. So they're one-sided clutches. And then we have a piston a retainer and a snap ring. And we're going to go over to the foot press and take this snap ring out. And we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And we've got our snap ring out. We have a retainer and a lip seal on it. Return spring. And the piston. So we're going to... There we go. And notice this is a molded piston. We're gonna replace it every time. Both of these pistons are coming in the kit, so we're gonna replace these. So now we're gonna take this over to uh, the solvent tank, clean it all up, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We've got all our parts cleaned up, and so we're going to go ahead and assemble the drum. And, and, and honestly, this is, uh, this is as straightforward as clutch drums get right here. So, and with the piston, and the thing about these molded pistons is that they go in 
You don't have to use a, a seal protector. Goes in nice and easy. So, always use the new pistons in with the spring and then the retainer, the snap ring over to the foot press and we'll be back in a sec. Okay, we're back from the foot press. Got our snap ring in there. One thing I failed to mention, I forgot to mention here, was, you know, after it's all cleaned up, you might want to check these spines. These spines go into the sprag right here. And always look for ceiling ring wear. We'll talk about ceiling ring wear over on this bad boy here in just a second. So, we're going to install the clutches now and check clutch clearance. And to do that, we're going to uh, leave out the hub and install the pressure plate here. And we're going to check clutch clearance. So we'll get these clutches installed and we'll do that here and get that put back together. And now we're going to put our pressure plate in and then our snap ring. So it, it's good to note that you want to put this end in first. If you put this end in, this end in first, it'll overlap and the spring won't go in. So we're going to put that side in first. Work this into the snap ring groove. There. So we have our snap ring in. And now we're going to check clutch clearance because you can see there's no once this snap ring is in, this pressure plate doesn't move around. The clearance should be 37 to 56 thousandths. What we're going to check, we're going to use our bent feeler gauge. Always good to have this in your tool set. We're actually going to get down in here and get in between the pressure plate and the clutches like that. This is about 30 thousandths right here. Let's see. That's a 20, that's nice. So it's about 40 thousandths clearance, and that fits in there nice and snug. That's right in the center, right where we want it. So clutch clearance, 37 to 56. Now that we've dialed that in, we're going to take that, we're going to take the snap ring back out and finish assembling the drum. And if the clearance is too loose or too tight, these, these pressure plates are available from the dealer or from your parts house. They come in different size thicknesses and that's how you're going to adjust the clearance. So now we're going to go back together, make sure our bearings are nice and smooth. Yep. And put our clutch hub down in there. Work it down into the clutches like so. Good to go. Our bearing, nice and smooth with the tabs facing up. And back together with our pressure plate. And our snap ring in with the tapered side in first. Nope, got it wrong. This way in first. There we go. That way you won't have any problems. We never force it. And that's it. That's it for the direct drum. We're going to set it aside and get on, get on to the low clutch drum and sprag assembly.